Hi, good afternoon, everyone. This is Robert Booth with Accelerate. Thank you, everybody, for joining. Uh, we're going to wait about a minute or two. We're just waiting for uh, for one last uh, person who we want on this call to join in, as well as any other uh, any other people that might be joining a little bit late. But I appreciate everybody for dialing in, uh, and I look forward to this session. So if you just give it about two moments, we'll go ahead and get started. <laughs> Hey, hey guys, guys. Good good how, how are you doing? I'm great. Yeah, thanks for being like that. Some trouble if you go to go to go to webinar just to join. Okay. Uh, okay. No, no problem at all. I just wanted to make sure that uh, we didn't know if we had to do impromptu set or not. Uh, but uh, glad you were able to join. So uh, we can go ahead and uh, and get started. We have Justin Keith on the line. Justin, if you want to introduce yourself real quick. Hello, everyone. My name is Justin Keefe, and I am the head of process mining at Accelerate. All right. Thanks, Justin. And uh, like I said earlier, my name is Robert Booth. I'm the head of the process discovery practice here at Accelerate, and the, uh, the man of the hour that we decided to that uh, was very nice to uh, join us today for this fireside chat is uh, is Rudy Kuhn with from UiPath. If you'd be able to introduce yourself, we'd be uh, go ahead and get started. Yeah, sure. So, welcome, everybody. I'm Rudolf Kuhn, usually go by Rudy. I'm the guy who founded Process Gold back in 2010. I'm based in Frankfurt in Germany. And after being in this business for over 10 years, our company was acquired by UiPath back in, in October last year. And my new job is I'm the vice president for data analytics and our global head of process mining or process mining ambassador, as we call it. So yeah, and it's my great pleasure you know, to, to be here today with you and, and talk about, about process mining. Great, thank you, Rudy. So, uh, really, what kind of uh, you know spearheaded this? Uh, you know, as you said, last October uh, is when when Process Gold was was acquired by UiPath. You know, that was a pretty big deal in the industry. I guess before, I just want to make sure is everybody able to see my screen? Are you able to see it on the right or on my right side? But be able to see the PowerPoint presentation. Yes, we do. We do. Great. Well, I do. So, Process Gold really turning into UiPath kind of uh, really made it made a big uh, big news in the industry. So I just kind of wanted to see because you have so much obviously context of that uh, being one of the original founders of it. I just wanted to know what what kind of uh, changes have been have you seen and what was that overall process of a uh, Process Gold being acquired by UiPath and some of the benefits that, uh, that you've seen thus far from that. <laughs> You know, it, it it all started actually back in April last year. So at that time, I was in I was in Silicon Valley. We were working on our international expansion, um, and I, I get a call from UiPath, and you know they thought I'm in Germany, so they they wanted to call at a convenient time, um, but I, it was exactly the other way around. So it was 5 a.m. in the morning, and so they woke me up. We had a nice chat for an hour. And afterwards, um, our head of corporate development, BJ, actually asked me, he said, you know, Rudy, please don't go back to Frankfurt, um, reroute your flight, come to, come to New York, because we really need to talk. So I did. Um, we had a workshop of something like 14 hours. And I think after the, after this, or over oh, wow. the second bottle of wine in the, in the steakhouse next door, he actually told me, you know what, I think it would really make sense if UiPath would acquire your company because um, this combination of process mining and RPA really, really makes sense. Well, right. you know how it works. It took us um, half a year to figure out the details. And on the 3rd of October, we signed a contract. And 10 days later, I really had the great pleasure and honor to be on stage in the Bellagio Hotel in Las Vegas together with Daniel and the other guys from UiPath. And we, we announced the acquisition. And, you know, that, that's the story. Yeah. Okay. I appreciate that. I, I, I like the story about the, the steak and the wine. I'm sure that was a good conversation. Um, yeah, absolutely. So I was actually at the uh, the the conference in Las Vegas uh, when that was mm -hmm. uh, announced as well. And I'm just wondering, from from your perspective, you know, it's been it's October. It's already July now. Uh, I just kind of want, you know, RPA was really what UiPath, um, where they they got a lot of notoriety in. Or they've uh, over the past couple of years been expanding, and we'll get into a little bit of that in our in our next slide. But I just wanted to see from your perspective, how do you feel process mining fits uh, into UiPath's you know overall vision? Um, you know. I don't know if you guys are aware or familiar with the hyper automation trend or yeah, that was announced by Gartner um, earlier this year. 
So hyper automation really is the idea that if you want to automate whatever can be automated in an organization, and I have to admit that, yeah, exactly, the hyper automation picture, that, that's a good one. So we have five boxes, you know, before we joined UiPath, there were only three boxes, the blue, the orange, and the purple one. And that was build, manage, and run. So without any doubt, um, UiPath is probably the leading company when it comes to, to build, to manage, and to run all kinds of bots, attended bots, unattended bots. We have some new AI bots and some very, very new testing bots, great stuff. But the biggest challenge for most customers really was to understand how the process are really executed. You know, for me, it's like, you know, for me, process mining is really like the, the X-ray system for business processes. So if it hurts, or if you want to avoid pain in the future, you should know what the process is. So you first need to extract or to read the data, to understand the process, to visualize it, to analyze it, and only then you can figure out what should be automated. And if we have some time, I actually have some, some dashboards um, ready, I can show you, you know, how this works. But the hyper automation idea really is to, not simply to automate, but to understand what to automate, what to understand the process, the, the purple box uh, actually is the engage box where we now are able to connect even our hyper automation, uh, our process mining platform with the bots. So when we discover any issues in the process, we can now ask the bots to take care of it. And the last box is the measure part, because of course, you know, after we have implemented RPA, we want to know what the impact of RPA really is. So we can use the same technology now to measure and to visualize you know what changed in the process with RPA. So right. this is you know this is why this makes sense. And you know again, process mining is like an X-ray system for business processes. And let's say you know for example, I go on a buy for bike ride every morning. And let's say bad luck, I break my arm and I have an accident. I come to the hospital and they will get you know they will they will X-ray my broken arm. They will hand me over the pictures in perfect resolution from all angles in color. And then you know just wish me all the best and send me home. I mean, what's the point? The problem is not solved. You know, I need some treatment. So I need a cast or whatever. So what we need really is diagnosis and treatment. And of course, there are many ways how to, to improve processes, but RPA is a great one. So we use process mining for the diagnosis and we use, again, RPA for, you know, as a solution for the problem. Oh, that's, and, and I really like that uh, the metaphor you use because when I was when I've been talking with clients, um, you know, specifically since October about process mining, it's it's inherently more technical uh, than, than RPA, right? The way you're, you're in terms of not just requirements from a data system or, or a system perspective, but also from data manipulation. Um, and sometimes what that that creates is a a little bit of a knowledge gap of of some time that, that customers are not able to really understand well what am i getting out of this um and i i thought the you know what you said before that the diagnosis uh is a perfect way of, of really being able to easily describe it and seeing how it correlates and works with with rpa as being the treatment of this but it's it's it's, it's funny because in, in that in that uh, comparison you gave um you know the the treatment is is what a lot of people think about, but the diagnosis is one of the most fundamental parts, right? And I think process mining really can, uh, really plays into that because many organizations don't have at least the level of detail in, in, in which you're able to use with these tools, uh, an actual understanding of how the organization really functions on, the, on their true micro level. And then being able to manipulate it, um, manipulate the data to showcase to you new new uh data points that you want to see such as well i want to understand what is the average throughput time for client for customer a from uh, activity b to c that would be something that you know you can get maybe a, a, a an estimate you know from a from a super SME or a stakeholder but to actually get historical data and something that you can actually track uh that is a, a a very big uh, value add uh, from my perspective. You know, maybe maybe let, let, me, let me show you how they do this, yeah. you know, because I think we are we are in the visualization business, so we, we should really show what we are capable of. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, can I share my screen? Uh, yes, let's see. I think uh, you I'm going to stop showing my, I'm going to change you to the presenter and then yeah, you can go on. Oh, okay, perfect. Perfect. Okay, good. Go. So. 
Okay, perfect. Okay. We can see your screen. That's great. Okay, guys. So what you see is just you know the the very first the very first dashboard of our process mining um, template called Application One. It's something we created based on on our experience from 500, 600 process mining projects. So we can upload any data into this template and we can visualize, you know, we have 50, 60 different dashboards. We can visualize the process and all kind of insights, but it's just a template. So whatever you want to change, you can do that. But we don't want to change anything right now. We are looking at some real data from one of our customers. Um, right now, we, I set a filter on the first quarter of 2019 and we can see that we have, you know, this is about an invoice approval process. We have activities like receive invoice, process invoice, approve invoice, and we also pay the invoices. We have 6,103 invoices in this first quarter. And seriously, this customer, they figured out 165 different ways how to, how to visualize or how to, not how to visualize, but how to pay or how to run this process. So when I go back to the process, um, let me simplify this one. So this is the most common way how this was done. And I have two sliders here, one for activity. So activities are these boxes and edges the connections between. And when I pull the sliders to the right, the system will show me what are the other ways, you know, or what are the other activities less frequent, how this process can be executed. So the more I add, the more activities I get, the more edges I get, the more exceptions or loops and so on I get. And if I go to 100% for activities and edges, I actually see the picture of the 165 different variants of the same process as it was executed in the first quarter. And, you know, my background really is, is, is process mining, but my RPA colleagues told me that there's no way to visualize or to, to actually to automate this process. Too many exceptions, too many variations, too many anomalies. So that right. simply doesn't work. I mean, you, you are the experts. Would you be able to automate this process? Uh, so from a high level, I would definitely say no. Uh, but I, I do find there's another thing from this. And I, again, I'm speaking from an RPA perspective um, because yeah. I am relatively new. To the process mining in comparison to, to, to someone like you but uh, scope is a very fundamental part automation scope or solution scope is a fundamental part of any rpa project and when we're talking about these variants to to put this back to how this would commonly come up in a project is that you're always trying to identify well what are the variants that are going to give me the most amount of savings right and again without exactly. having and yeah, no go for so it. what i can easily do I can filter now let's say uh okay well this process is too complicated but i just selected the five most common variants and if i let it go the system will show me a very different picture so this looks much better doesn't it yes absolutely So we should probably be able yeah we should be able to automate something over here and where should we start well maybe we can start with the bottleneck so when i switch to another metric like average throughput time the system will now visualize um based on the dark color shading you know it's getting darker over here the colors because we have a bottleneck we have a bottleneck between receive invoice and process invoice of nine days and these mm -hmm. nine days you know are really significant so this now probably is the part we would want to automate and we are currently working you know we don't we have more than just process mining we also have task mining task mining is a different it's a different technology but it's similar to process mining but with task mining, we are looking at, let's say, at the desktop of users. So we can really figure out what people are doing in the front end. Right. And now let's say, you know, we, we have automated this process and now we want to see the impact. And I go to another dashboard called automation. Again, I add all my complexity over here. And we see the same process. Again, the five most common variants. We, but now the color coding represents the automation rate. So we have a we have a legend over here, zero percent up to one hundred percent. So we can see, for example, that approve or receive invoice was fully automated already in the first quarter of two thousand nineteen, because there, there was a scan bot. Um, we ha we had a payment or interface to the payment system with pay invoice, so also fully automated. But everything else in between automation rate zero, mm -hmm. and we have this nice bottleneck of nine days. And when I get this right, you know, we let's look at the costs and we can see, you know, from the cost perspective that every execution of variant one costs us $98. But this will change in the second quarter because now we started to implement UiPath. So the first thing, when I switch to the second quarter, you will realize that, you know, we have a slightly different color code over here because no process invoice is 
partly automated, or let's say at the end of the second quarter, 24% of all invoices were mm -hmm. processed automatically. The throughput time only dropped from nine days to seven days, and the costs are down from 98 to 81. And when I go into the third quarter, it gets really exciting because now we have oh, wow. fully implemented it. Yeah, look at this, you know, process invoices now fully automated with 100%. We have even started to automate a fine check of invoice, 34%, and look at the time. So we are down from nine days to seven days and now to 34 minutes only. And the costs are down to $30. You know, and that's the impact. Yeah, no, I, I think I was about, I'm about to say what, what, what I think you're about to say, because that I've never seen that before, uh, where you're able to actually see it from, from the quarterly basis in, in, in terms of this particular dashboard. And from an RPA project perspective, I can't tell you how many times um, there, there's the rosy picture of RPA where we say this is the where you're able to, when you're in the sales side maybe, where you're saying there's X amount of potential value. But the potential right. value and the actualized value aren't always exactly the same. And in most cases, they're not. What you're really trying to do is make sure the actualized value is as close to what was quoted as possible. And but the problem is without having a lot of of customized dashboards or or a very you know uh, mature model, you're not really able to say what are the exact numbers. It's, and it's specifically not between activities like this. Um, right. So from a, I think from a proof of value perspective, this is huge um, for for any type of either whether it be a COE or an organization in general, you're really able to to see what is the value that you've been able to provide on a on a transaction basis as well as you're able to see it from a historical basis as well over quarters uh, and over time for you to actually see well what value have i brought to this particular business unit or department and i i think that that was uh, one of the points you were probably going to go to but didn't mean to cut you off there so one thing that i was uh rudy are you able to hear me Yes, I do. I hear you. Okay, great. Um, so one thing that I, I wanted to to ask is that, that there was, you said there was a template, right? Can you kind of go into a little bit of what what that means? Because some you know the, some of the clients that that I've worked with uh, kind of they don't know how exactly well how would I be able to get this? And I think that one of the the key things of of why Process Gold or now UiPath Process Mining is so great is that they they think of it from the end user perspective where you can make a dashboard as simple or as complex as you want, depending on who the audience is. And I think that makes a very, very big uh, deal. And I just want to see from that template uh, that you just mentioned, how that can kind of play into that. Right. Um, yeah, maybe let me switch to another slide where I can explain this, um, you know, how this works. Um, so, you know, what we need to do to get the data in, we need to read the data from the different from the different data sources. And we need to transform this data. So transformation actually means we need to build our event log. We can then load this event log into the application and we can visualize the, the process, the so, oops, sorry, the process, the social networks, and all kind of statistics. And I think that the one of the really unique selling propositions of UiPath process mining is that this entire, you know, I call it animal, really is the UiPath process mining platform. So we can connect directly to the data, we can do the data transformation within our platform. So there's no need for external databases or scripting or whatever. It actually works like any other BI platform. You connect to the data, you trans you you do your aggregation, you do your mapping of activity names and timestamps and then you can directly visualize it. So when we look at the application architecture of our platform, it looks more like this. You know, We have this, what we call connectors with our reader components and the transformers. So we can connect to any source or any sort of data directly. We can transform the data, build our event logs for, for purchasing or for sales. We can load this into our application directly and we can easily, you know, Usually we can answer between 80 or 60, 80, 90, sometimes even more of all the typical questions we get. If not, we can easily extend it and we can customize the, the whole application. So, you know, when we when we look at this, um, we have the circle of the plus over here. And let's say I would like to connect to a new data source. So connecting to a new data source is fairly easy. You know, I just click here, I have my data tab. I simply right click, I say, hey, I need a new table. 
I can directly connect to, I can upload the data source or data file I have. I can join data no matter where it comes from, or I can have connection string. And the connection string is very powerful. So if I go for connection, I get a new table, it's empty. I need to right click, I say edit, and it's not very fancy, but if I go to the help, you get a long list of connectors we have directly out of the box. You know, you can connect to Excel files, you can connect to any file system, ODBC for HANA or for any other database, scripts, tags, you can join data, left, right, inner join, um, ABAP, JIRA, JSON, XML, XES, email. And we, we, we are just about to release the latest version of um, UiPath process mining this week or next week before the end of the month. And it will come with a native um, connector for SAP directly. So you can okay. directly connect to SAP and you know read the data without any extraction, without any export of the data. And it doesn't matter if you are using HANA or if you are using the old ECC system, it really doesn't matter. We can connect directly to the data and start working with it. Great, and, and I know that's definitely a lot more technical uh, than, than I uh, oh, than I gave up, but I know Justin, uh, I, if you have any questions that you would like to, to ask on that, on those points on, on terms of, of basically what that library really is, um, you can go from there. Yeah, so uh, so the que a question I have for you is, so you say you have a uh, connector for now SAP, uh, are there going to be more connectors coming in the future for other uh, sorts of data systems like that? Because I knew in the past you had to do some oh, yeah, for, form of data transformations and data manipulations to get SAP to work correctly in process or UiPath process mining, formerly process gold. So will there be more in the future? And there do you will know be more in the future and there are more already. So, you know, when we talk about connectors, we actually have two categories of connectors. One we really call it like a product. So that's something that is heavily maintained and we are constantly working on. And then we have, you know, from the projects we have delivered, we have a lot of experience with systems like JD AdWords, like Oracle, um, Salesforce, ServiceNow, you, you know, the big names basically. So we know how to process data from these applications. Um, and over time, we will really release some, some standard connectors for that one. Right now, it's more like a library we can work with. We we also give um, we make available for our partners and customers. Um, but we are really you know we really distinguish also distinguish between real products and you know project based um, developments we did in the past and that are also available. Okay. Okay. I, I thank you for for that answer. I didn't realize that it's actually already twelve twenty five, and I wanted to show you one thing oh. uh, before before we wrapped up here because uh, there's there's a lot of information uh, and a lot of great information that we just kind of went over. And one of the things that from more of a from a sales perspective that I've uh, that I was mentioning previously was that sometimes the customer didn't exactly know well what is process mining, what is it capable of, and what value am I going to be able to get out of that. And one of the, the challenges was being able to, to, to package that into an offering that would be able to tech, check all the boxes. And if you could change, uh, I'm going to change the presenter very quick just so I can uh, be able to show my screen. Give me one second. Let me know if you could see my screen now. Uh, yes. yes, I can see your screens. Right. So this is actually uh, an offering that we uh, we've just come out with, and Justin is really going to be the one the, uh, that's leading this. But just to give you from a from a high level, it's called Mine90x. And uh, realistically, what it is, is thank you. What what uh, we're trying to to say here is that before we felt with a lot of pro, uh, process mining uh, implementations that sometimes the customers were hesitant because they didn't know exactly maybe how the cost structure worked. Uh, or they didn't under, they didn't want to have the initial outlay costs uh, for licensing. They didn't know if they had the use cases, and they didn't have to know what was really the timeline and the value that you were going to get out of that. So we really took a hard look at that, uh, and over the last couple of months, and then Justin uh, has come up with with uh, with this offering that's called Mine90x, where in 90 days we will deliver uh, at least two process mines, quote unquote. So we felt it was the best way of just saying instead of processes, let's just call them mines, because that's really what we're doing for 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 two individual processes. We are mining them to determine uh, to get the insights necessary for us for the organization. And really, how that we're we're structuring this uh, is in a pod format, where we have three we have three resources for every uh, delivery pod. 
that's made up of an analyst. So this is the, the more of a BA perspective that's doing the problem identification. So really understanding what are what is it the business is trying to, to get out of out of this um, and really creating that business case. And then you have the miner which is just basically the developer that's doing all the technical side as well as the setup and the data transformation of this, and then a coach that's really doing more of delivery oversight uh, as well as milestone validation. And what we've broken this up to is into four phases, uh, define, mine, refine, and align. And the point of this, of this program is that it's a fixed price as well as a fixed timeline that doesn't require any initial outlay on license. And what we have found with this is that um, when we have these 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 mines that we are guaranteed to deliver on uh, in those two months, it really kind of eases the pressure off of the client because it's no longer being just a proof of concept. It's now more proof of value and saying, okay, I know I'm going to get these two mines. Now I just want to make sure what is the value I'm getting out of that and what can we do after it, right? Because this is the diagnosis, as you've said. We also are saying, yes, this is the diagnosis, but this is our treatment plan that we say for that we we are recommending for this diagnosis uh, and we wanted to just to really because we have you here on the, the fireside chat to see if you have any questions on that um, and Justin would be able to provide any more more technical information I know we have about two minutes till we wrap up here but if you had any questions on that I just wanted to uh, to to showcase that to you Okay, so it looks like there's a few uh, questions in the chat for you guys. Um, so the first one says, how often do these processes change and how much additional resources does it take to maintain and continuously update the processes to stay relevant? Yeah, typically a response of a consultant, it depends. <laughs> it depends, you know, what the change is. Um, so I was just typing an answer, it really doesn't matter. If the process changed, um, as long as the underlying data structure doesn't change, so you know the process can change. We can see, we will see different different or different um, orders of, of activities. Everything we will see some violations, whatever. Um, the only thing that matters if the data structure in your application really is changing, and that's typically not the case. <clears throat> so when we look at systems like you know like ERP, the the underlying data structure really is very very stable for a couple of years. So of course, if it's your your homegrown application, there might be some some configuration required, but basically, um, you know, again, it depends. You know, so so Charles, I'm happy to jump on a, on a separate call with you guys and and to discuss this this topic. So you know, everybody who's in the call, you find me on LinkedIn. If you have any questions or if you would like to connect and also you know get some 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 updates on process mining, I'm always happy to to connect with you guys and and keep you informed. Um, what's, the, what's the next question? Um, how does the product tell you specifically in the workflow that steps contribute to the automation potential or just by directional at the higher level process function of request data, checked, approved, etc.? <clears throat> yeah, so you know, this is really something where we can use some other technology we call task mining. So when we discover that we have, you know, like like bottlenecks, we have um, loops in the process and everything, we can we can use task mining and task capture to look at this specific part of the process more in detail and really understand what people are even doing in the front end. So this is how we, we can figure out, Alex, how we are, you know, what can be automated, what the potential really is. And, you know, again, process mining is just a tool. So it's it's a perfect tool like, like an X-ray system for the doctor. So it will not do the work for you. It will not come automatically with a solution or a treatment. It will only provide transparency so you better understand what's really going on so you can really work on the solution. And the last question I can see, how difficult is to maintain the process with ever-changing organizations, processes, and systems? Well, Charles, again, it, it depends. Um, organizations are changing, but you know, really, if you look at the systems, the underlying systems, they are they are pretty, pretty stable. The process is changing everything, but the data structure, we find the timestamps, we find all the data structure, you know, in SAP is quite stable and also in other systems. So yeah, it depends on the process. That's something I cannot answer, you know, as a generic answer. It it again it depends on the on the situation. 
Uh, I appreciate the the uh, the answers there, Rudy. I, I know we're a, little, a minute over. I might have to to take you up on that offer because I definitely have a lot more questions uh, on the task mining part of this as well, um, and mm -hmm. see if we can maybe set something up to to kind of go over uh, to go over that and maybe some additional questions that we may have on process mining. So I, I really appreciate the uh, the time Thank that you, you had today. Um, and again, if anybody has any questions, you can reach out to to Rudy as he said on LinkedIn. Uh, or to myself or Justin, uh, our emails here at Accelerate or on LinkedIn. Be happy to answer any questions. Uh, and Rudy, thank you very much for the time. My pleasure, guys. Thanks a lot for 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 your interests. Everybody, stay safe and yeah, have a great day. Thank, thank you. you. Bye care. bye. Thank you too.